recognizing the infinite presence of the whole spirit of life itself and that which is our very life, our creator, our sustainer, and the unmoved mover behind all divine right action. And I bless this day for waking us up to be awake and aware of the infinite presence that not only dwells infinitely but also dwells particularly as you and I. We bless today's service knowing that something wonderful is already coming through to bless our hearts and to enlighten us. We bless everyone who has given their time, their talents, and their treasures to support this service. And we bless each individual, whether it's presently here in the audience and or online, and knowing that each one of us is an expression of the Most High God. And we bless our speaker today and the message in knowing in the middle of the appearance of mess, there is a message. <laughs> and for this, I'm so divinely thankful. Please join me in affirming. And so it is. Amen. So welcome, everyone. My name is Kaleem Nurding, and I want to welcome you to Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. And, um, we, and we are an interfaith gathering, and we, we honor all paths and spiritual communities and all teachings that uplift and enlighten human beings and, are, and express and affirm our oneness. We begin our ceremony of recandlelighting to celebrate the oneness that which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths come from the one universal presence, which we call spirit. And my candlelighter today is Dana Danford. <laughs> we give her a moment for the journey around the room. <laughs> Okay. 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 
<laughs> okay. Stand by. <laughs> and this is saying sister here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Marcus will do it first try. Yeah, sure. All right. And so let us begin. The first candle is the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. Shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of pristine spirituality. Hinduism, Honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. And Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. And new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And the last candle is the healing candle of love we invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone you wish to be included in this healing flame of love and light. And now that our flames of, the, of faith are fully lit, we move forward into our celebration realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Okay. And, and if you join me, and, and, I so, and so it is. Okay. So and thank you, Dana. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, today is our, our first Sunday. Therefore, we uh, remind ourselves of our mission statement. And so rather than having an overhead today, we're, I'm going to ask you simply to listen as though it was a prayer. Okay. The Alaska Center for Spiritual Living, our purpose, our vision, and our mission. Our purpose, our reason for being. We awaken and inspire love and oneness. Our vision, what do we want to create or become? We are an empowered, uplifting, and inclusive community. Our mission, how are we going to do this? We teach spiritual transformation with grace and joy. Please join me in affirming. And, and so, so it is. is. Amen. <laughs> okay, Judy, go ahead for us. And joy. And joy. <laughs> Okay, and also for our quote from the day comes from our Science Mind magazine from the December 2020 issue. So once again, I'd like for you to simply listen cont contemplatively. Okay. Take heart in this. What you create can be dissolved. So what you create can be dissolved. If you are the cause, you're also the remedy. Take heart in this. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs>
Thank you, Aaron, and our choir members. <laughs> we are spiraling up, up, up. Once again, welcome to the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Colleen Nurding. I'm one of the licensed practitioners here at the center. And we're so happy to have you present. I see some, uh, it's been a while since I've been here for the live audience. <laughs> and so wonderful to see friends and faces, and even some from many, many years back. So it's really wonderful. Right. So first of all, we'd like to uh, welcome you. If you have to be someone here for the, for the very first time before we do our announcements, if you, if you want to raise your hand, we have a welcome packet for you. Is anyone here for the very first time? Don't see any. It looks like your all things look familiar to me. Okay, well, thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Judy. All right. Okay, so we'll start with our uh, announcements. And I'm sorry, I, I guess probably, probably should first, our first announcement is to remind everyone that we are the Alaska Center for Spiritual, spiritual Living. Living. And one of our major primary purposes for spiritual transformation is prayer. So I want to remind everyone that we have prayer available in many different venues. Number one, immediately after service, if all the practitioners could please stand. So, or we have uh, Robert holding the presence. We have Judy. We have Cindy. We have Ann. And we have Linda. We have Cynthia. Yeah. And, uh, and myself. All right. <laughs> OK. Yeah. And so we're immediately available to you after service for one-on-one for -on -one prayer. You may also call our prayer line, which is our, our um, I should say our, our office number, and you'll also be referred to a prayer practitioner. You can also go online at our website. You can also request a prayer, and it'll be immediately sent out to us. We'll pray for you all week. And also, of course, if you would like to have what's called a, 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 a prayer session, which will take more time to sit and discuss the challenge and the details of the opportunities and apply spiritual principles to it, we're also available for that. So prayer is the name of the game. And I also should say, immediately after service, you may, or even during service, any time, there's a prayer box also to my left of myself here in the physical audience. You may fill out a prayer request, what's called a prayer request. And we can also respond to that and pray with you. Right, and for our announcements, we have a spiritual, um, I'm going I'm to allow the, uh, the glance to my left here. We have spiritual law of circulation, allowing the divine current to flow. Our gracious giving committee, uh, uh, collects, we, we, the main idea is that uh, the collection that we have in our financial service, we also recirculate back out into the community. And this week, it's like it's going to the Boys and Girls Club, this, okay? this month, I should say, correct? All right. And we also have Reverend Rachel coming to Alaska. Okay? She's our own returning to us. Uh, so she'll be here the, for a, a weekend activities and for a number of activities during the, uh, from the 6th to the 10th. And beginning Wednesday the 6th from 7 to 9 p.m., there'll be a book event from there to here, Insider's Guide to Navigating the Darkness. And uh, I want to make a comment on that as well. As you know, one of the major challenges that we have, and it's also called the common cold of the mind, that can become a pneumonia of the mind, is called depression. And so I encourage everyone to be part of this because she'll dive into that and share some not only personal experience, but also how we can not only maybe experiencing ourselves personally or we, how we can assist others. And Reverend Rachel is also going to be giving a musical concert on Friday, July the 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. right here at the Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. And tickets will be available at the door. And a Sunday gathering, she'll be doing our talk next Sunday, July the 10th at our 11, 11 a.m. service. And she'll be providing, the, and she's a multi-talented, she'll be, she'll be giving the music, the prayer, the talking, <laughs> okay, all in one package. <laughs> All right, and was that the completion of our announcements? Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, and ah, uh, and following the service next Sunday, there's a parking lot potluck. Is that correct? Yeah, Does anybody have more details on that? How that's organized, or how that'll work? Uh, if everybody would bring. Why don't you come up here so we can hear you? And then also you can give the minister's minute moment. Right, right I can do that. You can hang on to that, and I'll hang on to this. Um, let me see. I'm I'm looking at Tiffany to make sure I get the uh, and. Cynthia. Somebody. Cynthia George. Okay, so um, bring a side salad or a side dish. The main... Nope. Side salad or dessert. If you're bringing the dessert, come to my truck first. <laughs> um, we will, uh, right after the talk, we will commence to go out to the parking lot where... Uh-oh. I've really, I've really blown it. Here comes Cynthia to tell us what's really happening. <laughs> Miss George. 
But that was an appetizer. Now we get the, the real main meal. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just wanted to get the dessert to my truck. <laughs> Please note it's summer and we have oh, one yes. sweater. Yeah. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we're going to have we have Fortune and Bob Corbett coming in to uh, to um, <laughs> make pretend that we're out in the parking lot because between cars and all that other stuff, we've decided to have it inside. Bring a side or a side salad or a dessert. It will be in here. Um, we have a committee. Tiffany's bringing chicken. Cindy Hensley is in charge of the free foods, as in free of dairy, free of gluten, <laughs> free of <laughs> eggs, <laughs> and taste. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Somebody asked me if I could make a, a vegetarian dish, and I said, does it have a stick of butter in it? And they said, no. I said, I'm in trouble. Um, but yes, we will have it here. We'll have hot dogs and chicken and baked beans and some salads. I know we've got uh, all these things. If you would, please, um, call into the office and let us know the numbers of people that you are going to be, be here. Also, if you're going to bring a salad or dessert, just leave that message with the office. Um, okay. And that's it. All right. Thank and you. And we hope to see you. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so you much. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> We'd rather that we got it right. Thank you, Cynthia George. Yay. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, you can go that way. I'll stand here. Minister's moment. Okay, so just real quickly, minister's moment, not that I'm the minister. But um, I think everybody here knows that our beloved Sam Carlin had a heart attack. Uh, if you didn't, Sam had a heart attack <laughs> about a month ago. Um, so he ended up having quadruple plus a few um, uh, surgery. Uh, and the good news is, is that he is finally out of Providence ICU. Uh, it's been a long road for his son, Chris, and his daughter, um, Samantha, who also goes by Sam. Um, they have transferred him over to St. Elias, uh, where they're going to be doing a lot of um, really intense therapy. Um, so that's the good news. Now, the kind of crummy news is, is that their uh, virus, their coronavirus um, in place uh, is nobody gets to visit. Um, his daughter barely gets to visit. So we are keeping our fingers crossed that within a week or so that that might change and that we might um, get to go visit our beloved Sam. Uh, if you're interested, I have her phone number and you can text her messages, which she is reading directly to Sam. So that is our Sam Carlin update. Keep him in your prayers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. All right, and I'd like to do in introducing our speaker prior to the special music. Uh, you can probably tell by the uh, array of items up here that it is a special talk today. <laughs> okay, this person, the, our special speaker today, has been uh, here at our community for a couple, probably a couple of decades, and particularly a licensed practitioner for at 12 years or more. She's really our director of events. <laughs> okay, so whenever we have any events, whether it's a Sunday service or any other event, this uh, person uses her talent, her skills to direct it to make sure it comes out in perfection, with perfection, okay? She is also a compassionate care director, even though that's not her official title, but as you just saw the announcement, whenever someone has a challenge or opportunity for moving stuff around in their life, <laughs> okay? or they happen to have a medical challenge or whatever, this, this individual is the first one to give us a call, at, or I should say, email, email, email. We're aware of what's happening, and we hold everybody in prayer. And you probably have guessed it already by now, okay, that our special speaker today is our own Linda Steiner. Her, to her topic is, wait, I might need that. Yeah. <laughs> Linda Steiner, okay, following our special music. Thank you. This next song is a little unusual to have in this spot in the lineup, but it really reflects 
the joy and the fun that Linda has embedded in her talk. So we all, uh, we welcome you to please come join us even though it's special music. Alaskan of more than know, 30, 40 years. Um, perhaps we asked for a little too much sun, but <laughs> I'm taking it. Good morning, Alaska Center for Spiritual Living. Hey, take a minute and uh, stay in your seats, but go ahead and wave and say good morning to each other. It is so wonderful to see so many people here. Um, happy almost 4th of July. Um, may you find yourself standing in a place where you consider yourself to be free and that you appreciate that. And so part of how you can be free, you want to guess? <laughs> ah! um, is maybe to do with your own place, your own space. Um, so I got the, a spiritual two by four about a month ago, uh, and uh, which involved me leaving the employment that I thought was my life's work. Uh, I went home. I was in shock. I had no idea what the mm -hmm, I was going to do, what was going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. But what I do know as a practitioner is the very first thing I did is I sat down and I came up with a wish list. I came up with a wish list for my next presentation because what I know is that as soon as the universe knows what you want, bam, you get it. And so the, um, on my wish list, I put down that I wanted the job to find me. I did not want to put in resumes. I wanted the job to find me. 
Well, don't you know, less than two hours later, Judy Wolf emails me and says, hey, I'll pay you to clean my garage. I'm, Are you okay? We're not doing anything. And so I went to Judy's garage. Oh my God. <laughs> Although I have to say that at least Judy could park her car in the garage. She couldn't get out of the car, but she could get it into the garage. So we worked a little bit harder so that she could actually get out of the car. Ah. And so today's talk is about three women. I've been very fortunate that uh, Janet saw what I was doing for Judy and wanted me to work on her garage after I was funny with Judy, done with Judy's. And then Joan heard what I was doing at Janet's and, and uh, Judy's. We need another letter in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and invited me to clean her garage. And so today's story, although is very universal, um, is also of these three women. Because guess what? This practice of cleaning a garage turned out to be so much more. It turned out to be a spiritual journey that I was not expecting. I thought I was showing up and going to throw stuff away. Well, not necessarily. So, as you can imagine, when you're not attached to anything and you walk into a place, you start to like, mm, that needs to go, that goes over there, and this needs to go here. Why? Why do we have 500 plant holders? <laughs> Well, what is, what is, you can, your backyard holds 50? Okay. Nope, nope, I get it. We'll keep them all. We will keep all the plant holders. Not let those go, because you never know when you're going to need them. You never know. Now, Judy, um, you know, her garage actually surprised me with, um, with a few things. She had her vegetables, her canned vegetables, mixed in with um, her pesticides. So that was kind of the first thing that I went, oh, I, I, I might want to change that. But then I looked at, the, at some of the food. <laughs> Does anybody else check expiration dates? <laughs> yeah, do you? Okay. Well, I checked Judy's expiration dates. Judy, thank you for still being my friend. <laughs> I get it now. Judy has a very deep-seated belief. Does anyone want to guess what that belief is? Say that again. Expiration dates don't matter. Expiration dates do not matter. Judy is now, you are now best friends. <laughs> you are now best friends. And so I ran across some things that were not of this decade. <laughs> Wasn't of the last decade. <laughs> but, but they were born in her lifetime, and they were things that she cherished. We fought over these. She humored me by getting rid of half of the 50 or so powdered yogurt. It's her thing. They're from New Zealand and they were very important to her and it took me several days to understand that, that that yogurt meant something 
to her. And so I'm also very gracious that she actually um, allowed me to throw some of it away. Actually, I think what she did is she threw away the flavors she didn't like. <laughs> and so I called that a win, and we were good. Um, but then I was kind of making um, a deal about this cot. Yes, this cot right here. This cot that was in, tucked in between her water heater and her whatever else is between the water. Yeah. And I said, Judy, what do you need a cot for? Because I need it. Oh, oh OK. Um, when was the last time you used it? I've never used it. OK. It's out in the garage collecting dust in between your thingy thingy and your other thingy thingy. We're going to get rid of it. No, we're not. <laughs> Judy, it's a cot. You have a spare room with a bedroom in it. You have a couch. It's my cot. I bought it for $12 at Goodwill. Okay, this isn't, this isn't helping your case, Judy. I'm not getting rid of that cot. I went home that night going, I'm getting rid of that cot. <laughs> you know what she did? <laughs> she went out, she got that cot, and she hid it. <laughs> I begged her to, to bring it today. Could you just please bring, I promise you can go home with it. It's your, God, it's your cot. I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, and what was interesting about it was we got to, it finally occurred to me as a practitioner of over a decade, <laughs> maybe I should ask her what that's about. And I did. And I got, I got the most surprising answer. And the answer was, Linda, my life is about hospitality. My life is making sure that people know that if they need a place to stay, that they have one. And I don't want it to depend upon whether I have a guest already or not. That cot to me represents that you can come to my house and you don't have to sleep on the floor. That cot is my heart and my soul. That cart represents who I am. I was going to be funny and say, all right, you sure you don't want to get rid of it? <laughs> But she took my breath away with that, an with that answer. Who, who, can, who can deny that? Someone within our community who wants to be there, not just for me, but for you, Colleen. She wants to be there for you, Tiffany. Don, she wants you to know you have a place. Erin, your bird could sleep on this cot. <laughs> So the cot stayed. Of course, we, we had a few other things that we got rid of, but I understood that this job suddenly was much, much bigger than what I had thought it was going to be. And so I opened to the potential of making sure I listened. And then not taking anything for granted. So, thank you, Judy, for letting me clean your garage. 
And then I got to go to the next adventure, which was Janet's house. How much fun was this? Now, Janet lives just down the street from Judy. Just down the street. And Janet is a master gardener. She is also incredibly well-read and she is a crafter. Part of her garden is so amazing because of how she has put it together. It is not the normal go to uh, Home Depot and grab the pot of the day, fill it with dirt and, and display it. She takes things and she makes them into art. A beautiful art. Like, psst, come on, come on. No, she's gone to work. Come on, come on over to her house. I like, I've given uh, several tours of her house that she doesn't know about to my friends to go, oh my God, do you see what she's done here? And look what she's done here. And oh my God, people really want to get to know you because they really like your style. Um, and your art speaks to people. But we're talking about somebody who is, and she has approved this for me to say, she's 75 years old. And she has a, she has a daughter. And she moved from a big house to a little house. And so there was lots and lots and lots of stuff. If one of the bead stores ever closes, <laughs> it will reopen at Janet's house. If you need Christmas supplies, whether it be tissue or ribbon, it's at Janet's house. It's like, this is pretty cool. If you want gardening supplies, if Lowe's or Home Depot goes under, or if there's a fire, go to Janet's house, because she's got it all. She's got the sprinklers, and she's got the things, and she's got the, she has the, whatever you do with this stuff, like lots of whatever you do with this stuff, like everybody could take several home of this stuff, right? But this, this is really important to her. This is how she relaxes. This is, this is who she is. And if she comes up with one of those creative ideas, she needs her stuff. So we negotiated and I got rid of some of it. But the other stuff, we just organized. We just made it work. We just made it work. This was important to her. This was her life blood. As was anything and everything from age zero to adulthood that had her daughter's name on it. So, she uh, adopted Danica a long time ago, um, and, and now Danica is an adult, and she has the Christmas watercolor she did in third grade. And I'm not going to mess with that, right? I'm not going to take away her grandmother's stuff. I'm not going to take away her mother's stuff, and I'm sure not going to take away her daughter's third grade watercolor stuff. But we organized it. Kind of put it somewhere wherever she's feeling that she needs a third grade Danica. She's got it, right? So that was kind of fun. What is it with empty containers? What is it? <laughs> who, 
Who has a closet of empty containers? Go ahead, raise your hand. Yeah. Go ahead a little higher. What is it? What is it with the empty containers? Oh my God. I could have a. a there what? Uh huh. Uh huh. How many empty containers do you have? You don't give away that many Christmas gifts. And you're Jewish. <laughs> She tried, right? Right? Isn't that a good one? But I also want to talk about what Janet and I talked about when it came to why. And we had a long conversation about, she's 74, 75. She's 75. And she's in amazing shape. She still works. She still runs. She still does everything that any of us can do. But she's 75. And she has a daughter. And she doesn't want to leave all of that stuff to her daughter. And so having me come in and help is her way of acknowledging that. It's her way of acknowledging that while everything is good, everything is great, I'm going to make choices for myself to make it easier for my daughter. She deserves a round of applause for that. If you could, yeah. Because how many of us are like, oh my God. I wish they would throw away that mustard from 1912. <laughs> right? Right? All right. So def definitely, deeply, deeply um, affected by Janet and her spiritual thinking and opening up her garage. And we're having a garage sale at her house next Sunday, just saying. My last, my last client, my last person was Joan. Oh my God, Joan. I love this woman to death. She is so much fun. And she's got a thousand <laughs> of these bags. Thousands of these bags. And I asked her, what, well, Joan? <laughs> and um, she was like, you know, I started collecting before they, well, I thought that we could still take them to the thousands. Um, well, I thought that we could still recycle them. And she missed the boat of recycle on that. So um, all of these bags are here for your personal private collection that needs more. So um, she also has a lot of candles, like a lot of candles. But she let me take the ones that were in the garage and release them because she's got like 500 in the house. <laughs> so she was, she was feeling... Um, uh, like she could release those. She really could. Thousands. This is her. She had one and she's releasing one. And I've already heard a couple of people in here who would like to fight over this. So, um, The interesting thing about what you see here is that it all can go home with you. You all can have a piece of my talk today and go home. Except for the cot. That's, that's going back with Judy. But everything else here um, is available to be transferred into your life. <laughs> Empty canisters for those, yeah. And whoever needs whatever this is. There are people, see, there are people who know what this is, right? It's, you hook it to the thing and everybody needs one, everybody has one, so it's yours, sold. See, somebody out there wants it. 
um, as well as, you know, Joan released some Christmas. Look, we have, oh, we pared it down. So there's only like five boxes of Christmas. Five. Well, you, you forgot all the, yeah, and the, and the, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you learn when you straighten things out, you count differently. <laughs> so, um, yeah, these spiffy candy canes. And who doesn't want to walk down this street in, with their purple stocking and their really cool hat? Available today. But what is it that Joan taught me? Manatees. Oh, come on. There's somebody here who needs a manatees. You know, they're going extinct. It's a really big thing right now. So that has a place. Joan took my breath away. Because when you're doing this stuff, you do a lot of talking. How's it going? What's up? You open up that box of memories. Tell me about this. Now, Joan's been with the FAA for 40 years. She has every award known to man for her service in the FAA. And I just applaud you for that, for being somebody who has put in time in one place, which is really important to all of us, whether we know it or not, because she's a trainer. Yeah, that plane that didn't crash yesterday. Thank Joan. Now, Joan, Joan has lived in several different places, and you can have her Washington license plates if you want. Yes, and her Alaskan. Every single one of you have license plates in your garage. I swear to God, every single, who's, you're laughing. You have them, right? I've got the old license plates. Who's got the old license plates in their garage? Yeah, yeah. So we got some more to, to add to your collection. Um, So Joan, uh, <laughs> I've got to show this. Joan has the market on cassette tapes. If uh, yes, cassette tapes, and she's brave enough that she's letting them all go. What would you think? At least a thousand of them. Close. So again, she's made that. Yeah, uh, and part of it is because. <laughs> because we found the boom box for the cassette tapes. <laughs> it was like this big. It was like, that got to go too. That was an easy thing to send out the door. So we have candles up here. We've got books. We've got paper items. If you've ever had somebody in the same job for 40 years, they have like lots of paper stuff. It's all yours for the asking. But where breath, where my breath was taken away with Joan, I was talking about her dad. Her dad died, what, 2000, 2013. Her dad, aw, her dad, who was a bully. He was an asshole. He was a bully. He certainly is not somebody that she probably really want, wouldn't want to introduce to any of us. He, uh, he provided really well for his family. I want to put that out. He knew how to fix things. He's really good at that. But he was a bully to her from her birth on up. And so as we're having this conversation and talking about her dad and just talking about just, it was really hard. It was really hard to talk about her dad. 
And what brought up the subject is that she had opened up a box with his clothes in it. Oh. And she's like, she's looking, this is his shirt. She's looking at his shirt. She's, she, she says, I'm keeping this. And I'm like, no, you're not. Well, he's a bully. Why are you keeping his shirts? Because it's my dad. So he's a bully. Why are you keeping his shirts? And kind of a light bulb went off. And she kind of says, yeah. Why am I keeping his shirt? Why am I, why am I keeping his shirt? And so we compromised. And she kept one shirt. And it happened to be a shirt that she bought for him, that she made, that she made for him. And we took these dad memories and we really walked through it. We were able to uh, do the stuff that didn't count, but then we also acknowledged the good. Let go of the bad and acknowledge the good. And so, I know I'm going really long, so we're gonna bring this to an end. Um, we have a set of broken crutches. And we also have the one thing that I swear to God, we all have many more than we need. The grocery bags! So we have a lot up here, and they're really colorful kitties. Claire's looking at the kitty. And we've got good ones that did it. We reduced Jones and Janet. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't get out of that one. We reduced their collection of these types of eggs at least by half. We have tons of these bags as well as enough hangers that aren't being, oh, Betty, you just turn, you just turn total white. Um, and so we have quite the collection of hangers up here. So everything you see up here, I'm blessing it and I'm wishing it to find a new home. It is yours for the taking, throw an extra buck in the pot. But I want you to think about, maybe you have a drawer, maybe you have a closet, maybe you have a garage, maybe you have a room, maybe it's your entire house, but with a little thought, just a little bit of consciousness we can take all that stuff and put it into a way that you can see it so you can use it you can see it so you can give it away you can see it and you can laugh you can see it and you can have that memory just a little bit of time and a couple of friends so this talk was really about Janet, Joan, and Judy, and their courage. Their courage not only to let me into this space, but to let me talk about it. So, thank you everyone. Namaste. And I invite all of my colleagues to join me in prayer. And as we simply surround those of this in this room and those blessing us by their presence through YouTube or online this morning. We just say thank you that a like-minded group of people have come together to, to oh, open the closet door and see what's inside it and, and to share stories that maybe not the stories we usually share. And among them might be a story about your health, 
Maybe there's a story about a relationship that you're having that isn't going well. Maybe your employment has the same two by four that I had. And so we just simply acknowledge and we claim and we declare right here and right now that all of these issues, whatever is in your heart, is in the heart of God, is in the heart of us. That as the children of God, we are here to surround you. That you are covered in love, you are covered in grace, you are covered in whatever it is that you need to have happen. We got prayer and we know how to use it. And so we just simply step into the knowingness of how this universe works and is just happy and willing and wanting to say yes to you. And so we simply bless not only each other, but this time where we get to connect at maybe a little bit deeper of a level. And we take this energy, this knowingness, we release it to that universe that has already said what? Yes. 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 We take a breath together. We release this by saying, and so it is. Yeah, nobody die on this. Also came for this vintage suitcase which can be yours just by taking it out the door so 
Today is an amazing day for you to maybe add a little extra to the to collection plate as it goes by because literally everything that you see up here, except the cot, Judy, not the cot, um, can be yours for the taking. Um, help us out, take something home, um, even these cubes. Hey, we got a lot of stuff up here and it has your name on it. So let us just breathe into the blessing that we have money to give and that we have space for more stuff. So please join me as we uh, say our blessing as Judy runs up here with everything. I, I didn't have the cue. <laughs> Judy, it's time. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you. And so it is. Thank you, Linda, for that awesome message. Hmm. We also want to recognize a few of the people who are online watching us. Uh, we understand Lynn and uh, Prosick and Marion Brown, Michelle Moore Jones, Luann Poge, uh, Beverly Churchill, Pamela, the Yukon Beulah, and Judith. So thank you for joining us, and thank everyone in the audience who's joined us. And as part of our, my benediction, I'll just kind of uh, I want to share some of the. Uh, messages I got from Linda's mess that she left us up here. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. so, so first of all, I want to recognize in every appearance of a mess, there is a message. Because there is a place for everyone. Right where we are, God is. And clearing the path can also be a legacy of service to those who come behind us. And releasing and letting go, extracting the good from the past, but releasing letting go to that which no longer serves us. And I simply give thanks for this message, and I know that each one of us have a personal message in our life, and we cherish the message as we release and let go, knowing that Spirit is our provider, our guider, and is more than enough. And I'm so thankful for the message. I'm so thankful for everyone who served in every capacity for the music, for our technology, for Judy the Usher, and for each precious expression of God online and in our audience. We are enough, and for this I'm so thankful that it is so. We simply now release and let go, and please join me in affirming, and, and so, so it is. is. Amen. <laughs>